Hi everybody and welcome back to chapter 18, video number 2. Here we're going to take a look at computing the contribution margin and of course understanding what that means and what that reveals <coughs> about the company's cost structure. All right, what is the contribution margin? It is defined as the selling price per unit minus the variable costs per unit. And that gives you your contribution margin per unit. Now, very different is the contribution margin ratio. Here, we're going to take the contribution margin per unit and divide that by the selling price per unit. Now, we can also calculate it the same way by taking the total contribution margin and divide it by the sales. So, in this example, we have selling price per unit of $100. We have variable cost per unit is $70. So, our contribution margin per unit is $30. Our contribution margin ratio is 30% which we compute by dividing $30 by $100. Okay, so how are we going to use this? Let's look at computing the break-even point for a single product company. Here, the sales level where the total sales equal the total costs resulting in zero income. That's our break-even point. And we can express that, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of either units or dollars of sales. So, there are three methods to find this break-even point. There's a formula method, the contribution margin income statement, and then the cost volume profit chart. So, let's look at that. Key formula here, break-even point in units, we're going to take the total fixed costs, and divide that by the contribution margin per unit. And I think if you could see analytically, that's going to equal 800 units, and that's the amount of units we need to basically overcome all those fixed costs of $24,000. Now, we can do it a little bit differently if we want to figure out the break-even point in dollars. The formula is a little different. Again, we're going to take the total fixed costs, but this time we're going to divide that by the contribution margin ratio. In this case, the contribution margin ratio was 30% or 0.3, and we're going to divide $24,000, which is our total fixed cost, by that contribution margin ratio, which equals $80,000 in sales. So I need to sell $80,000 of, of sales before I make any money at all. And that sometimes is a revelation to some of the people for whom I've worked because they say, hey, you know, I know we're making money on each one of those units that we sold. How come we're not making more money? And the reason is you're too close to the break-even point. Okay, so... What does the contribution margin income statement look like at break-even point? So here's our contribution margin income statement format. We take our sales, we subtract our variable costs, we get our contribution margin. And then from that, we subtract our fixed costs, and that's going to give us our pre-tax income. Okay, so if we apply that to this example, here we have $80,000 in sales, our variable costs. We're going to take 800 units at $70 each. And that gives us a contribution, that gives us 56,000 of variable costs subtracted from sales, gives us a contribution margin of 24,000. We could have just multiplied 800 units, which is the units to break even, times $30 to get the same 24,000. Our fixed costs were 24,000, so when we subtract that from a contribution margin, we get zero income. Okay. And this is how it looks if we did a chart. I think very 
interesting. I've drawn this chart so many times um, to explain this point. It's like an old friend to me. And, and uh, so here, this uh, is going to equal your break-even point in dollars here. This is 80,000 and 800 units. And as you can see, this is where the um, cost line, which is the red line here, crosses the green line, which is the sales line. And anything in this pink region here is a loss. We start making money when we sell things past that break-even point. Now you can see that this cost line starts at the fixed cost level of $24,000 here. So um, sometimes we'll draw that fixed cost line horizontally like I did with my little uh, red dot there. <laughs> okay, so important to understand how that works. Now, the cost volume profit chart um, shows you that we're going to be making money uh, every unit that we sell past the break-even point, we're going to make the contribution margin per unit on that unit sale. So we had to have 800 units to break even. Now, once we've broken even, the eight we're going to make, let's say we sold 801 units, we're going to make $30 which is that contribution margin per unit on that one unit that exceeded the break-even point of 800 units. Everybody see that? All right, good. Now, we're going to take a look at a most likely scenario, a, a pessimistic scenario, and our variable cost per units under those, under those assumptions. Now, we're going to say that if we were to do a pessimistic forecast, um, our selling price per unit is going to be $96. Our variable cost is going to be $72. So our contribution margin per unit is not going to be nearly as good as the most likely scenario, which we just illustrated. And if that comes to pass, we're going to take this 27000 of fixed cost and divide it by the contribution margin per unit and that's going to say it'll now take us 1,125 units to break even if the pessimistic scenario transpires. So I think you can see pretty easily that if the selling price increases the break even point decreases. Conversely if the selling price decreases the break even point increases. Same principle with variable cost, is that if the variable cost per unit increases, that's going to increase the break-even point. And similarly, um, I think you can follow the rest of it from this slide. All right, now we can look at several applications of the cost volume profit analysis. And here we have a margin of safety. And that says we're going to we're going to expect to sell so much, but that's going to be so much above um, our uh, expected sales. So if I were to take the expected sales back out by break even point sales and divide that by expected sales, that's going to give me twenty percent, and that's my margin of safety. I can be wrong, let's say, on my expected sales down to 80,000 uh, units, right, $80,000, and still at least break even and not lose money. So, how do we compute income from some expected sales? Now, what we do, we know that we're selling these little beauties at $100 each, so in this example, we sold 1,500 units or 150,000. 
Our variable costs, we can multiply simply the 1,500 units times the $70 of uh, per unit variable cost to get 105000 And that gives us a contribution margin of 1,500 units times $30, uh, which is our contribution margin per unit, which gives us 45000 total contribution margin. Back out our total fixed costs, and that gives us income of $21,000. So, if we want to look at target income, we use the same formulas. We just tack on the, the target income to that to find out how much uh, pre-tax profit we're going to make. So here is our fixed cost. We add on top of that $12,000 of target income. That's how much money we want to make. And then divide through by the contribution margin ratio. And that's going to give us the dollar sales necessary to hit a $12,000 pre-tax profit. And if I want to do the same thing for units, I tack on, I do it exactly the same way. I take the fixed costs plus the target income here and divide that by the contribution margin per unit. In this case, $30. And that says I need to sell 1,200 units to uh, generate uh, our $12,000 target income. So our contribution margin income statement then for that last example um, we have our sales well we can work backwards is what this is saying we want to make twelve thousand dollars we know our fixed costs we can back into the thirty six thousand of contribution margin we want to make and then we can uh, compute the level of sales here one hundred and twenty thousand and 84,000 of variable costs necessary to generate that 36,000. Okay. So now we'll take a look at evaluating our business strategy. Here are revised break even point in dollars. We take our look at our revised fixed cost or our revised contribution margin ratio, and that tells us our revised break-even point in dollars. And then if we want to um, in, you know, change our fixed cost downward a little bit, but our contribution margin downward a little bit, we, can, we now raise our revised break-even point in dollars from 75000 to 90000 and if we want to look at a revised margin of safety, we take that 125,000 minus, that's our expected sales, minus the 90,000 break even sales and divide that by expected sales. And that's going to give us our revised uh, margin of safety. Pretty straightforward there, I think. Okay, this looks like a good place for us to stop this video, and when we come back, we'll take a look at computing the break-even point when we have more than one product. And uh, this is a very useful uh, calculation, as most companies have more than one, one product. Until that time, bye for now.